Okay, this video is to describe uh, paragraph development, specifically the body paragraph. I wanted to show an example of a body paragraph looking at specifically the meal plan, looking at different types of sentences that make up a fully developed paragraph. So again, the meal plan meaning the uh, main idea or the topic sentence. E stands for evidence or details or facts or statistics. The A stands for analysis, which could also mean compare and contrast, could be uh, explain, comment, basically looking at your own original ideas and trying to connect the evidence with the topic sentence. Then the last sentence, the linking sentence, or it could also be a summarizing sentence that will conclude each body paragraph. So let's take a look at an example here. I've got a body paragraph that uh, begins with a uh, topic sentence. Okay, so educators promote critical thinking, uh, critical thinkers by thoughtfully considering appropriate performance verbs that the English language learner will employ throughout the learning process. So then I continue with three pieces of evidence or three uh, evidence sentences that have a uh, citation. So think of the evidence sentences as requiring a, a citation. And the first, I mentioned Blim's taxonomy. And so the organizational pattern that I'm following, because every body paragraph is going to have its own organizational pattern. And in this case, the idea is to introduce uh, perhaps the, what I think the, uh, the most common thought of when, when one thinks of critical thinking, oftentimes we think of Bloom's taxonomy. So the idea was to introduce uh, Bloom's taxonomy uh, from the very beginning, uh, maybe taking a more quote unquote traditional approach to critical thinking. The second piece of evidence, I introduce a new notion, primarily of looking at different performance verbs that uh, are introduced with Bloom's taxonomy, but instead of it being hierarchical, I introduce this non-hierarchical uh, alternative. And so the idea with the second piece of evidence is to introduce, again, performance verbs that could be perhaps in common with Bloom's taxonomy, but looking at it uh, from an, a non-hierarchical point of view. The third piece of evidence then, I take this idea of non-hierarchical uh, ideas of performance verbs and frame it in the sense of six facets. Uh, and so the, with the three, you can kind of see the idea here is to create some sort of logical pattern. Uh, in this case, looking from a more traditional uh, point of view to an alternative, basically two alternatives. Uh, to looking at uh, critical thinking perhaps in a, in a different way. Then the next two or three sentences set out to analyze or really look at the relationship between the evidence and the topic sentence. So the first, the first analysis sentence really looks, uh, kind of comments on this idea of learning in terms of degree. So looking at the different performance verbs and looking at it from a non-hierarchical point of view, but looking at learning as, as looking at a combination of performance verbs, or specifically a combination of six facets uh, of, of, of ideas, so that we look at critical thinking perhaps in a different way. Uh, the six facets of understanding, although there's only six performance verbs, the idea is that all of these verbs that exist will fall under these six different facets. So this first comment or first explanation uh, is sets out to look at the, uh, the process of developing one's critical thinking skills in terms of degree. Then the next sentence looks at, it says here, promoting understandings among language learners rejects the notion that certain verbs automatically Will be performed first, right? So it's it's more of a direct argument or an opinion against Bloom's taxonomy after having explained why uh, the writer thinks that uh, learning is more in terms of degree, or critical thinking specifically is more in terms of degree. Not so much looking at one verb, then leads to another verb, leads to another verb in this hierarchical point of view. Then we have the final sentence, which serves as kind of a summarizing sentence, which basically looks at 
combining the idea of understanding some crit critical thinking with language learning together, bringing in this aspect of content knowledge and skill level, bringing those together and the, compl the complexity of what that might mean, but within the context of critical thinking. The target audience here is English language uh, education and learning or educate or educators in general. So this last sentence kind of sums up the main points of this paragraph in terms of the target audience. So this is the source where I brought, got this, uh, this paragraph and I hope this helps clarify uh, things to look at. This is one example of looking at a body paragraph whenever you're developing any type of academic essay where APA is required. Uh, APA is the uh, format of choice here in this particular example. So any citations that you look at here are uh, per APA. So take a look at this when you're developing your own body paragraph. Think about the organizational pattern. Think about the way in which you're going to introduce your evidence and then also how you're going to explain that evidence and draw connections between the evidence and the main idea. Make sure that the first sentence of your body paragraph is the topic sentence. And so that's going to be your original idea. The evidence, again, as I mentioned before, will be uh, from an outside source. So it will require a citation. And typically, the analysis types of sentences in the meal plan will be an original idea, but it will be commenting. It'll be your opinion, your perspective, your explanation of the evidence to the main idea. Uh, a common mistake uh, writers make are the is that the um, the sentences that they use the analysis sentences will introduce new facts or new information and so when you're developing your own body paragraphs take a look at the analysis sentences and make sure that those analysis sentences are directly related to the evidence that they, they're commenting specifically on the evidence in terms of the main idea that's the key that those sentences really explain and and make it clear to the reader why you introduce these particular types of evidence and what's the relevance and, and why are you, uh, you know, introducing this, these ideas in terms of the main idea. And then finally, the last sentence in this case, I used a summarizing sentence. Uh, you may also link, and for example, in this case, the main idea of this body paragraph to the main idea of the next body paragraph, thinking in terms of uh, consecutive paragraphs in, a, in an essay. Okay, so I hope this helps. Feel free to leave any comments below if you have any, uh, any comments or suggestions or questions uh, regarding uh, paragraph development, specifically looking at body paragraphs.